I've been talking to Philip Sykes about this. You're like him. He's from the British School of Etiquette. I didn't realise there was one, but there is, and he's from it. So I started by asking him about the history of the handshake. Where did it all start? Great question. Actually, it goes back to ancient Greek times. Um, it really does. And th th there's history books stipulating. I don't know if you've ever seen in, in some of the old uh, films, feature films that were put together on major research, it, the Romans used to grab each other by the wrists. They were really, because they wore these beautiful big cloaks and, and they were grabbing each other by the wrists just to see that you hadn't hidden a weapon up your sleeve. That is where one of the one of the reasons why they used to grab wrist to wrist as as a form of greeting. Uh, the handshake, we believe, really came into play when um, the, the the sword was obviously the the chosen. Uh, form of, of protection people used to men used to obviously in the scabber used to carry a sword obviously generally on the on, on the left hand uh, hip and if your right hand was going toward the sword you knew you better run whereas if they placed their left hand over the, the, the handle of the sword and they offered their right hand as in coming in from the right hand side that is where the handshake we believe really came into practice show friendship to show I'm not going to you know cut your head off right now Yes. So it is a lot of history behind how the handshake developed and the form and the importance of the handshake. And Malcolm, taking it a step further, the handshake is actually a very important part of our connecting with people. It's a way of, of um, I've not so much, I don't like to use the word summing someone up, but it's a way of connecting the human touch. And the firm handshake is a very important part of engaging with the other person. Do you miss it, Philip? Yeah, oh, it's a great question. Do I miss it? Um, I've hardly seen anybody. So I think, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, this is the thing. I mean, you yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm doing so much work. We, we as an organization have been phenomenally fortunate in, in pivoting into the online sort of Zoom approach. Yeah, I do miss it. I, I miss the connection with people, Malcolm. And I think, you know, if you met someone for the, like, for example, if you and I had the privilege to meet and I was in the studio with you, um, the first thing I'm sure, you know, from, from a habit, from, you know, more a natural sort of approach because you grew up from a young age, you know, look in the person's eye, shake hands, you know, greet them properly. It was taught to us. And I would very much, I would have to think twice of do I shake Malcolm's hand or, or don't I? I think now more so now than ever before, I'd be more, obviously more, far more cautious. But and, and maybe I would go to the namaste or the hand on the heart. But I think I think a lot of people do miss the handshake. Yeah. So it'll take some time before we're shaking hands again. Oh, without a doubt. Um, without a doubt. I think people really are going to be so much more vigilant. I mean, one of the, uh, one of the doctors um, wrote an article many, many years ago on, on this particular sort of scenario, and that was um, that just through the handshake, you can give, you can give someone a res respiratory disease. Um, and unfortunately, as you know, Malcolm, our hands, I think we touch our face on average 20 to 40 times a day alone without us even realizing it. So I think people are going to be very, very clear on not wanting to come into contact with another, with one another, with, with the handshake. Obviously, amongst loved ones and that sort of thing, and people in, in your own sort of circle of, of influence and your f close family and relatives, may, it may be something you do. But uh, even then, I think people will go with caution. And what goes on at the British School of Etiquette? I'm quite interested. I'd quite like to join. <laughs> Malcolm, we've focused on some wonderful uh, opportunities. We've, we've, if I may, uh, we've got um, a brand called Kitty Kit, where we teach kid, uh, young children uh, resilience and, and, and the importance of manners and you know, giving them some confidence. It's about building confidence, people, at the end of the day. We then have uh, mindset and manners for teenagers, again, focusing on growth mindsets, giving them the fun fundamental tools of there's the old adage in life, good manners will open doors at the best that the best education cannot. Um, I would put in there good manners will often open doors that the best education cannot because I think it's all about growing and learning. We have a program called the Polish Professional, which is our business etiquette and coaching. We focus heavily on emotional intelligence. In other words, giving people the tools to really understand why they do what they do, the way they behave, how to build relationships, how to connect, how to grow your businesses through the power of etiquette and manners. Well, I have my hand on my heart for you this morning because because it's lovely speaking to you, Philip. And who knows, in time, when we start to hug, we may start to handshake again. I hope so, Malcolm. I do. We as human beings, we need that interaction and that human touch and connection.